This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Drive out of the car! With your host, Mark Martinez. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. And the English professor. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. I'm not going to lie, I continue to listen to that intro day in and day out. I love our new intro. Again, I cannot give enough thanks to Nick Lendl and 2 to 1 Media for putting that together for us. It's great, but more on 2 to 1 Media later. Guys, my guest this week, as you can tell by our thumbnail picture, man, we have not seen eye to eye all the time. Uh, I'm your host, by the way, Mark Martinez. Yep, I'm here bringing you Can Crusher Spotlight. I'm, I don't know if I'm excited, disappointed, or what, but I have Dylan Bostic on the show, and we've been into uh, a few tiffs around uh, Pittsburgh a few times. We, uh, we didn't see eye to eye because he's always fighting my favorite wrestlers in IWC. Yeah, that's all it is. But we do sit down and we talk about his last IWC match and what's going to be going forward with Dylan and more on that in a minute. As I always say, uh, I'm really excited to be partnering with Dylan a little bit on his next venture. So I'm excited. And we just sit down and we ask the normal questions that we always do because we really haven't spotlighted Dylan. So without ruining everything that's coming up here in the interview with Mr. Bostic, uh, let's head it over to Mr. Al Snow so you can hear about Collar and Elbow and all the great gear that Al keeps producing in everything i got my shirt on right now guys if you think i'm joking i literally wear a collar and elbow shirt once i get out of work every day if it's going to go announce basketball football anything it's either a regular tee or my hoodie i always have collar and elbow on because it's so damn comfortable it, it really is besides the cool designs and everything they have it's just a comfort shirt Uh, Today I have my normal, you know, property of collar and elbow shirt on. One of the very first ones I got. And you can get it. You can get it at collarandelbow.com. So head over there and when you check out, once you pick all your things that you want from hats, hoodies, tees, and all of that great stuff, in the promo code, type in CAN CRUSHERS, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS, all one word, you will get an extra 10% off of whatever is going on on Collar and Elbow. Uh, a lot of cool shirts out there, and again, one of my favorite ones that has just been released a couple months ago now is the Macho Man version with Head and Al Snow in it. So make sure you check it out, and here comes Al, and then we'll be back with the Justin Bieber of professional wrestling, Mr. Dylan Bostic. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome back, guys. Don't forget, when you check out Collar and Elbow, to use the promo code CANCRUSHERS, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS. But it's it's not about Collar and Elbow right now. It's about this guy. We have never really seen eye-to-eye at IWC, and who knows where his path is going to be taking him. 
Uh, he's going to punch me in the face through the computer, but he is still the Justin Bieber of wrestling to me. Welcome to Cat Crushers, Dylan Bostic. <laughs> the Justin Bieber of wrestling. Haven't heard that in a while. Right, but you are. I, I know you've got rid of that moniker in a long time, but I can still see it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be upset about that. That's not a diss. I mean, Justin Bieber's one of the most popular people ever, so, you know. Right. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> so I'm going to start real quick with uh, your last IWC match was with, against one of Can Crusher's biggest. Now, when I say last IWC match, I put that last in quotations. Are we really not going to see you in IWC for a while? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say that I'm not going to be back at all, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Until Plummer can open up that checkbook a little bit more, I'm not coming back. You know, I come there and I steal the show every time and I just don't feel like, uh, well, the fans, uh, you know, um, I don't feel like the fans, like, respect me. I don't think they appreciate me. And the same with Plummer. I don't think he appreciates me as much as he should. Okay, well, I, I agree with the fans. Most of the times I don't respect you or appreciate you, but I do respect what you do in the ring when you do wrestle. Um, I think you should be in the title hunt, the heavyweight title hunt, all the time. You know, no more, you know, high stakes or super indie because you're that damn good. Yeah, I mean, and it just seems like every time I get that opportunity, something happens. I get screwed out of it, or it changes to something else. So you know what? No, nah, no, nah, not me, man. I'll just, I just won't come back for a while until Plummer comes begging me like he always does. Oh, that's that's good to know that that's not a last with the air quotes because uh, what you do for wrestling across the board is unbelievable. And Pittsburgh, as much as everybody hates you there, we respect you. Yeah, I think everybody there just loves to hate me, you know? Right. Everybody there is just jealous. I don't know. It's, it's fun, though. Let's rewind all the way back to the beginning. Uh, how did you find this wrestling? Was it a grandpa, a grandma, an aunt, or an uncle? Like, who said, this is the stuff you should be watching, Dylan? So, I just remember when I was, like, five years old, my mom turned it on. And it was, like, storming outside. My mom turned it on, actually. And, uh the electricity went out like five minutes into watching this and then I freaked out and just wanted to watch it, wanted to watch it so bad. And then finally I started watching it. I like found it on TV again, started watching it and my cousins like were obsessed with wrestling so just grew up around it. Did you, uh, were you a WCW guy? Were you a WWFE guy? Which, which one were you? I was, I was both. I was both WWF and WCW. I like both. Yeah, there's different aspects between both. Who are some of your favorites and who you try to uh, make yourself after? So, like, my uh, my all-time favorite is Randy Savage, and he was my first ever favorite. Um, and then I ended up, you know, training with Rip Rogers and becoming really, really close with him. I'm still close with him. and find out he's he lived with randy for a long time and uh and everything and then i found out that randy and i have the same birthday which is pretty cool um but that was my first favorite and my and still my all-time favorite but like when i was you know growing up i liked you know stone cold and and goldberg and dx like i i liked everything so like i didn't have like just one favorite I like I just like the whole show, you know what I mean? So I was entertained top to bottom. I just I don't know, it was an all over wrestling. Yeah, it it continues to grow with your life too. You just get people like you entertain me and my son and you know, the buddies, kids and everything. So uh, indie wrestling has done so much for us that we want to continue to say thank you to you and every other indie star out there. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for coming and enjoying it. What was your deciding factor to get in the wrestling now? I know you just said that it was in your blood, but when you graduate and you're, you know, you're working at Quickie Mart or wherever, what was the thing that said, damn it, I need to go see Rip Rogers? So uh, I actually, when I was about 10, 10 years old, 
uh, my mom went on a, like one date with this indie wrestler, but he ended up giving us like tickets to come to the local show in Shelbyville, Indiana. And uh, then I just started hanging around him, and, like, I started setting up the ring and tearing down after shows, and then they started training me when I was about 12. And uh, then I had my first match when I was 15. But as soon as I started going around them and, like, training, and, like, I knew this is it. I was, like, 12 years old and knew. So is that your first – I the, the word real is not right. The word uh... – real training that you had or because I know you were in OVW and you always brought up Rip and with us you know Al Snow and our great relationship yeah. is OVW where you got your main training though? So um, my main training was with um, Tom Troy Van Zant, Bobby Black and Diamond Dan Garza in Whiteland Indiana that was like you know, my main training, but I trained before the shows or whatever at, at New Era Wrestling in Shelbyville, Indiana. That was like, that was my main training. But then I was probably wrestling about, I've probably been wrestling about three years or so. And I was like, well, I need to learn like psychology and I need to get like, I need to get ring time in and like, I need to get like, you know what I mean? A lot of training in. So I went down to OVW for a ring of honor slash OVW tryout. And then uh, Danny invited me to start coming down there to OVW to work TV and train at Rip's class. And then I was like, well, that's what I want to do anyway. So I um, ended up just deciding as soon as I graduated high school to go down there. And that's where you kind of got polished, so to speak, right? Polished, yeah, I would say polished. Polished, well, because you're on TV all the time. Yeah, because before I could just do stuff, you know, I didn't really – no rhyme or reason of anything. I just did stuff. So I went down there and and uh, and got polished. Yeah, that's a good word. We're going to continue with that. Um, I, I'll tell you who I think you are a comparison because I look at you in the ring. I see two people. One, a Greg the Hammer Valentine because he does anything to win. You know, he broke Wahoo's leg, for God's sakes. And then just the smirkiness, uh, you're Rick the Model Martel, too. You know, do you, do you see that now that I said that to you in you? I mean, you do anything to win and you're a douche sometimes, right? <laughs> I love it. I love the comparisons. I just hope I'm better looking than Greg the Hammer Valentine. Well, yes, you <laughs> slightly, slightly are, and we'll stay away from that, but slightly a little better looking. So you you got the look of Martel then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been in the ring. You've been in the ring with a lot of noteworthy people. Um, can I throw five or six of them out and let's talk about them a little bit because I think they did a lot for you because you started at a young age running into some of these guys. Yeah. Right, yeah, I agree. Jimmy Jacobs. Jimmy Jacobs. So my worst ever match was with Jimmy Jacobs when I was 15 years old. And it just turned into me and him, like, fighting. <laughs> it was just so bad. And every time I see Jimmy, we both just just die and just talk about that match. It was so bad. But it's definitely a memory I'll never forget in that awful building in EWF in Marion, Indiana. <laughs> So good. R RJ City. I love RJ. So RJ and I met at IWC, and I just remember when Plummer was bringing me in, he's like, oh, well, we kind of already have, like, a guy that does, like, a child star kind of thing. His name's RJ City, da 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 da, -da. So we kind of want you to change your character. And I'm like, okay. And then, like, we ended up just being the same character, and we just worked together, and it was a blast. And then we ended up um, tagging a lot a lot in uh, Toronto and then um, turned on each other and had, like, a, you know, pretty good little feud. And yeah, RJ's, RJ's a good dude. <laughs> I like RJ. Working with him is a blast because he's very similar to, you know, what I do, and, like, our mindsets are very similar. Yeah, one of my favorite teams besides the fraternity in IWC or U2, you guys' shtick was just right on. Uh, when you were part of Team LeBar, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, we had a really good singles match at um, IWC. Whenever I was living in California, they brought me in for, um, I think it was maybe, it was like a, uh, I think it was like the reunion show 
or something. And, and RJ and I had a singles match that was really good. It was a very fun, entertaining match. Uh, a little bit of a plug, then. You can catch all those on IWC Network for only nine ninety nine. Hey, hey, don't promote Plumber's crap on this thing. Oh, okay. No. Okay. He better he better send me some money. <laughs> he, he better send me some money. Uh, Both of us, we'll split it. We'll split it. We'll split the advertising. Deal. Deal. Uh, you fought Magnus, but we all know him now as Nick Aldis is running the NWA. So, uh, and you had Mickey James in that match as well. How was that? That was a blast. I remember, um, like. Uh, Mickey, you know, she, like, came out, and then, like, I cut a promo on Mickey and, like, got the fans, like, super heated, like, just wanting to end my life, and I just remember wow. finishing my promo, and Mickey just looks at me and, like, and goes, shit, and I'm like, what? So then Mickey says a little thing, which they're going to react no matter what, because it's Mickey, you know, but um, then Nick comes out. And Nick, after the match, Nick was like, dude, I knew that was going to be a lot of fun just because whenever you're cutting your promo, how much heat it had, like, it was like, it's crazy. And, um, yeah, Mickey was like, yeah, I looked at you cause I, and said shit because she's like, I didn't even know what I was going to say. She's like, it was – the crowd was so hyped. I was like, I didn't even need to say anything. <laughs> but that was a good time. You are one of the best talkers on the in the indie circuit whatsoever. Where did you get – that skill is it do you practice in front of a mirror i mean that's a silly question but where where do you get this or again is this just true dylan is this your real life so it's a little bit of both so like i'll watch movies and just like see the way people say things uh, or like see what they say and just like kind of get a reaction for it and then i'll just kind of like use stuff for movies tv um, but then a lot of it was practicing with Rip too. So Rip was all about promos. And whenever I went to OVW, I was terrified. I couldn't cut a promo to save my life. My first promo was my first promo I ever cut in my entire life was actually at OVW in front of uh, Jim Cornette and like everybody else that was there. Like it was it was terrible. So it was just uh, overcoming that fear and like working with Rip all the time that that really helped me with promos. Your first interview in front of Jim Cornette. I mean, let's let's throw away what's going on now with him. But back then, and still one of the greatest talkers in the business, you had to have been shitting yourself. Oh, I was. And he's like, kid, he's like, and I messed it all up. And I completely just lost it. I just couldn't even talk anymore. But he's like, kid, he's like, <laughs> he's like, you're so tense. You can, it looks like you got a board shoved up your ass. <laughs> and I just started laughing. And as soon as he said that and started laughing, like it, it honestly made me feel more comfortable. Because like I, Jim could tell how nervous I was. You know, like I was literally 18 years old at OVW doing a promo in front of like all these, you know, OVW and Ring of Honor guys. And I was, yeah, I was nervous, you know. So Jim, I have nothing negative to say about Jim because I worked with him a little bit in OVW and like he was always around and stuff and he always you know seemed to like me and we never had any issues so I, I, I like Jim Cornette he always uh supported what I did at least he treats you well if you treat him well in the business he'll treat you well correct correct I, and I don't know the other stuff I try to stay off the social media online stuff so I don't really know the details of, I just know he has heat with everybody but I don't know what he said or Good call. I just try to stay out of the wrestling drama. Good call. It's the smartest thing probably to do because uh, I'm still fighting with Calvin Couture, so uh, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. Right? All right, so you had have, you have some time on WWE. You uh, pretty much got squashed by Ryback. But that was early on as well, so let's talk about that. When you were on WWE SmackDown, what was your first thoughts, you know, running through your head? You know, um, I had been going for a couple weeks at that point um, to, like, Raw and SmackDown and having, like, matches before the show. Um, 
So, like, at that point, I was, like, kind of used to being there. I wouldn't say comfortable, but just used to, like, okay, this is what I got to do at this time. This is what I got You know what I mean? Like, I at least knew what to expect being there. Um, and I just remember William Regal having this speech about promos. And he's like, you know, think about something that's really that's really embarrassing that they could ask you to do, like if it's dancing or like, you know, whatever. He's like, think of something that would really embarrass you, be the most embarrassing thing. He's like, and then just practice cutting promos like that in the mirror or on camera multiple times, just over and over and over again, and eventually it won't. You'll feel comfortable, and that'll actually make you better at all your promos. And literally, as he said that. I was thinking, you know, either singing or like dancing would be like the one, the two things that I would just be like, hell no. And um, anyway, um, after he's done telling us to do that, he's like, but don't worry, like you'll never, I'm sure you'll never be asked to do like one of those things anyway. He's like, it's just, that's just how you can practice promos. And literally, as soon as he's done with that sp- speech, this writer comes up to me and goes, hey, um, Here's your script for tonight because you're going to wrestle Ryback. Or Ryback actually picked me um, to wrestle him, but then the script guy comes over and hands me the script. This is your promo for the match tonight. Um, it's going to be a little different. You guys are going to rap. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, hell no. I don't want to rap on national television. That would be terrible. And I just remember looking over and John Cena sitting there, and he just smiles at me and nods his head. And I'm just like, oh, my God, because, like, you know, that's how he started in WWE. So it's right. very ironic that I get handed a script about rapping, and then there's him sitting there looking at me. And and just I'm sure he could just tell that I just shit my pants, like the look on my face. And he just smiled and just nodded his head. I'm like, wow. But, what could you do after that, right? You couldn't say, no, no, never mind. I'll just enjoy catering oh, again for the no. seventh time. Yeah. You can't be like, no, I can't rap. (laughs) Like, you're at WWE, you have no choice, you do whatever you're told. So, in those quick couple seconds, where did you get your rapping uh, skills from? Did you uh, call up Eminem? What what was going through your head to say, shit, what kind of rap? You know, Snoop, Tupac, where were you going? Well, you know, I was like, I'm just going to do the best I can at this, which I like rap, so... That wasn't the issue. It was just doing it in front of someone, like, and not only someone on TV, like 10,000 people there live and a million or two million people at home. Like, that was the nerve wracking part. It wasn't the rap. It was just doing it was the, oh, okay. It was the terrible part. Recently, you were also seen on AEW. Uh, many people might not have caught that because it was quick, but you were on AEW. How is that? What, how is the difference between, and I know the answer, the WWE backstage and the AEW backstage? So I don't know how it is for everyone, but, like, I mean, the last time I was at WWE, um, I felt I felt okay. It wasn't that like bad just because like i know a lot of the people there um but a lot of times you feel like you're walking on eggshells at wwe you feel like everybody's like just watching you like oh i didn't like the way that guy walked or they'll make themselves unapproachable so you can't like go up and say hi to them but then as soon as you walk away they're like that guy didn't say hi to me or shake my hand like you feel like that the whole time at wwe but at aew everybody's super cool because, you know, they're indie wrestlers that have really grinded it out to, like, get a job. So they know the grind. They know, you know, how it feels to be an extra. Um, but I'm also friends with probably 75% of the people there. So I, I have a good time when I'm there, you know, because I, I get to hang out with friends and talk to friends and stuff. Um, so I have a good time when I'm at AEW. I mean, I've had a good time the last couple times I've been at WWE just because I know a lot of people there, too. But... AEW is a lot of fun. Nice. Okay, before we get to the main reason why uh, we're having you on the show, keep it short. I know you're a busy guy. Um, three silly questions, and then we'll promote the hell out of what's coming up. Uh, you have the chance, and I tagged you in it on Twitter, and I'm upset that I don't know if you did anything or if you weren't picked because I don't know everything. But this past Saturday, I just talked 
to Mr. Michael Herman from Retrosoft Studios, Retromania Wrestling that we're all excited about. And you were in the running for possibly being on Indie Mania. Damn it, did you follow up with it? <laughs> oh, my God, man. My life has been so hectic. I know exactly what you're talking about, and no, I didn't. I'm disappointed in you. I don't even know what that is. What is this? What? It, Retromania is the newest video game coming out. It is a spinoff. Actually, not a spinoff. It is the sequel. Do you remember 1991 WrestleFest? WWE WrestleFest? Yes. It's the second coming of this with the NWA, the House of Hardcore, the, the Road Warriors and everybody are on it. And they're doing this indie mania where indie stars like you, RJ City, Jay Bradley, all are in this tournament. If you win this tournament, you are a playable character. That's why I tagged you in it. Damn it, Dylan. <laughs> oh, my God. See, see, I dropped the ball. This is what I do, man. I just, I, I get past the ball and then I just drop it. You know, that's what I do. So you know nothing about it. So great segment there on Retromania. Sorry, Mike. But <laughs> you're, such a, you're such a great guy, Dylan. All right. I know. I'm just awesome. Uh, the two cheesy questions that we ask everybody, you have Mount Rushmore. Um, I don't want to hear, you know, the ones that Dave Meltzer is going to say. or anybody. Who is Dylan's Mount Rushmore that's made you wrestling? I would say uh, Randy Savage, Eddie Guerrero, and Randy Savage, Eddie Guerrero, uh, probably uh, probably Steve Austin. And one more. There's four on my rush more. <laughs> oh, how many did I name off? Oh, three. No, three. My bad. <laughs> no, just three. I'm just playing. Um, you can yeah, say you. I don't. I, I don't want to. I don't want to like say one and then be like, "Oh, I should have put this guy on there." The, the fourth uh, one is always the worst one to pick. What's that? The fourth one is always the hardest one to pick. Anybody can rattle three yeah. off. Number four is like, ah, yeah. oh, man, if I throw Flair up there, I should throw Dusty up there. If I throw Flair up, Hogan should have been up there. How about Steamboat because he can wrestle, you know? Oh, let's go. Let, actually, let's go Steamboat. Yeah, yeah. So I put Randy Savage, uh, Eddie Guerrero, Stone Cold, and Steamboat. Nice. Nice. All right, and one more silly question before we get to the main reason. Uh, you had a dream match. You can have anybody you want. Where would it be? What stipulation? And who would it be against? So, well, obviously it would be at a WrestleMania because that's where I'm going to get paid the most money. Duh. Uh, it, does the person have to be alive or, like, or like current? No, 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 no. It could be anybody. Oh, okay, it'd definitely be Randy Savage just because, you know, clearly I love Randy Savage. And then what was the other part of it? The stipulation. Would you want a stipulation? Oh, no, I don't care about that. Yeah, I just I just want the money. <laughs> and the experience of me, Randy Savage, WrestleMania, pay me. <laughs> great, great. This is going well, by the way. This is, this is probably uh, one of the, the uh, greatest interviews that's going to be on Can Crushers is I'm giving you answers the whole time. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about your new venture. Thank God you'll know something about this. Uh, January 11th in Shelbyville, Indiana, you are bringing back ASPW. And from the talent that you have on there, um, let me name some names because they're Can't Crush Your Alums. You have Randall Floyd, the real deal. You have Jay Lee, one of the first women on Can't Crushers. And you have Shiloh Jones, who, Shiloh Jones. Uh, OPW alum, All Can Crusher alum, and you have more. Uh, gloat on the rest of the talent that you've brought to Shelbyville that night. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this opportunity. I don't know anything about it, you know, clearly, because every <laughs> other question you've asked me, I haven't known anything about. No, I'm just playing. But, um, yeah, no, I'm really excited because, like I said, my journey started in um, – my pro wrestling journey started in Shelbyville, Indiana, which is my hometown. The, you know, kind of cool part about this, um, the building that we're running in, the Salvation Army, is literally right across the street from the building I had my very first wrestling match in. 
Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty cool for me. I've been wrestling over 12 years and coming back home, it's always cool, but coming back home and wrestling literally across the street from where I had my first match is a cool, you know, really cool, cool thing. But, um, anyway, um, yeah, the building had been shut down for about a year now with a bunch of construction and we not being able to get people in the building or parking or anything like that. So we had to shut the show down for about a year, which I hadn't been there for a little while before that. Um, but the guy, you know, has been running it. He's, you know, dealing with some health issues and like, um, you know, life's getting a little bit busy for him. And he just called me and he was like, you know, um, uh, I want to sell the company to you. Um, or, you know, you and I can run it together. So in the moment right now we're running it together, you know, just helping each other out. But, um, he's been, he's been in the hospital and stuff sick. So it's been me trying to get everything going. Um, but, it should be good. We got a bunch of guys from OVW, like you said. Um, we got a lot of Indiana talent, too, like Jake Oman, Scotty Young, Bobby Black. Um, Clint Poe is returning, and he's from Shelbyville, Indiana, too, so that'll be a pretty big deal because everybody always likes to come out and see him. But uh, Sorry, my dog's, like, eating something. That's all right. Mine's taking um, a nap. Anyway. <laughs> but... um it should be pretty big, so I'm hoping that it draws well. The, the only thing that kind of sucks right now, like whenever I did my scheduling for the events, um, I looked up like you know the Shelby County basketball schedule for all the high schools in the county, like football schedule, all that, and um, what they didn't have on the schedules yet when I made this and like announced the date, they didn't have the Shelby County basketball tournament. <laughs> so literally – Every team in the county is going to be playing um, that week or that weekend when we're running the show. But it should be good. Um, but the goal about the show for All-Star Pro Wrestling, the goal is we're going to start doing these once a month. And then we're going to have them filmed. And then we're going to do a post-production uh, live stream on my Twitter like a week or two after the show. That way I can you know try to help everybody get their name out a little bit more and like – help get my stuff more public because you know a lot of times these like, companies that i wrestle for like they won't post it on youtube you have to like go and subscribe to their thing and pay money so instead of like thousands of people watching my matches they're getting like maybe a hundred people to watch my matches so i'm hoping that this will not only help me but help other people nice uh is there i know fight tv does something like this that they I'm not saying little, but, you know, little uh, federations, organizations like you can join Fight and promote them. And they're maybe a month behind, but still it gives more viewership, right? Is, have you looked into Fight yeah. as well? So my goal is um, is to start out with just the Twitter to build up the following for the All-Star Pro Wrestling Company. So, like, it's very easy for me to get people to click on a stream, having, like, 300,000 followers and, like, posting a live stream. It's, it's easy to get people to, like, click on and view for a little bit. But to get people to literally click a link and get download an app and, like, get on Fight TV, it would be a little bit harder. So, like, I, if they don't know what it is, you know what I mean? So, like, I feel like if I can get a following for All-Star Pro Wrestling rather than myself, get – the company of following, then I can get the Fight TV deal, and then that way we'll have good numbers on Fight TV. I completely understand what you just said there. If you give them something easy to push and watch, they love it. If they have to push, click, watch, do something else, they don't know what the hell they're doing. And that's me saying it, not you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So it's, it's easy to get people on a live stream to click on something they don't know what it is to watch for a second at least. To get them to get over to Fight TV will be a little bit trickier. So I think if we build up a fan base for All-Star Pro Wrestling, we build up a following and like a, a want for the company and want for the, the product, then I think that I can get a you know, Fight TV thing and it'll, it'll be good. It'll be good for everyone. Now I know um, this Saturday, it's January 11th, as we're recording on the 8th of January, that this is you know a couple days out, so we'll we'll help you. Um, can you announce February's date? Because maybe there's no basketball going on. Maybe you can have 
If it's Shiloh come back on to talk to me about whatever, Jay Lee, I, I always talk to Jay Lee. We love her. Randall Floyd hates me because I don't like his hairline. But anybody else you can shuffle our way as well to help promote uh, All Star Pro Wrestling, we're on board with you, Don. Awesome, man. I can't wait to work together. But the next show will be February 8th. So um, that'll be the next All Star Pro Wrestling event after this one, February 8th. Um, I don't have the full card out. Yet, no spoilers. No uh, spoilers. Yeah, definitely no spoilers. We don't want to do that because we don't want to know if you win the championship or what's going on. But can you talk? Uh, can you talk about a couple matches that's going to go on this Saturday, real quick? Uh, two or three of them. Yeah. So um, this Saturday, no, we got Jake Oman versus Bobby Black, um, which Bobby Black's been the All Star Pro Wrestling champion for for quite a while now since he hasn't defended it since the company's been under. Um, we got that match. That'll be a really, really good match to see. Um, then we got, I'll be wrestling Shiloh Jones, which is really cool. Cause I've always liked Shiloh's Shiloh's work. And I've actually never wrestled Shiloh before that. I remember we might've had like a tag match or six man tag in OVW, but I definitely know I haven't wrestled him in a singles match. Um, so that'll be one of the other matches. And we got Jay Lee versus Alice Crowley. That'll be our women's match. That'll be super interesting because we don't, you know, have too many girl wrestling matches in Shelbyville. Um, so that'll be a good little addition. So the show should be pretty good, though. But we, we also got Clint Poe returning. So I don't know what's going to happen there yet, but that'll be a big deal because Clint's a, you know, a hometown hero. He's got a lot of friends and family in the town. So should be a good event. Nice, guys, and when Dylan gets this link, we will also post it up on our page so you guys can go right from there and watch it as well. He'll send it over to me. I'll get it on Can't Crusher's page. And um, I, I know you're busy. I, I don't want to keep you uh, away from feeding your dog or whatever else you have to do today, but shout out some social medias that they should go follow from All-Star Pro Wrestling, yourself, and anybody else that you want to promote right now. Yep, so you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. My Twitter is Dylan underscore Bostic, D-Y-L-A-N underscore B-O-S-T-I-C. Uh, my Instagram is at Dylan Bostic, D-Y-L-A-N B-O-S-T-I-C. And then you can follow the All-Star Pro Wrestling pages. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and all of the ads are ASPW Indiana. Nice. All right, Dylan, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again here in the near future uh, via text, whatever, sending people our way to help promote All-Star Pro Wrestling, and we're really excited to see what happens this Saturday in a couple weeks when you send us that link. Heck yeah, man, I can't wait. So first and foremost, of course, Bostic is looking for more money, and that's why he's going to be taking a sabbatical from IWC. Uh, maybe he'll return, maybe he won't, but uh, let's focus on what he is doing. I'm really excited for All-Star Pro Wrestling, and as we talked, as you heard, uh, we're, we're willing to work with him. We're willing to do whatever, get some more people from All-Star Pro Wrestling on here. Maybe we can have Jay Lee back and talk about what she's doing. Of course, Shiloh Jones, uh, Randall Floyd, again, he still hates me because I have a better hairline than him, but we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but make sure when uh, we get this link, uh, I'll put it up on there. Give All-Star Pro Wrestling a look. Guys, it's going to be pretty much a free stream of the event that happened, but it's going to be live for the first time on Twitter, or like I said, we'll put it on our Facebook page so you guys will be able to watch you know, Bostick's match, uh, Randy Floyd, the list of names that Dylan talked about. So... Let's support them. It's indie wrestling, guys. We all love indie wrestling. We all love wrestling. So let's go out there and help out as much as we can. And as much as Dylan and I uh, pass, maybe have not crossed the right direction sometimes, we're all, we're all in right now. Let's just leave it at that. We're all in to make sure All-Star Pro Wrestling comes back around and uh, brings uh, great entertainment to Shelbyville, Indiana. And as you heard, uh, it's going to be a possible time that Can Crushers are going to be making the trek out to Indiana, and I'm excited because we can also knock off a baseball game out there too as Mrs. Can Crusher is looking into that right now. Uh, great interview with Dylan, guys. We love doing these. You're going to hear more again. I continue to say that. 
But if you're looking to be spotlighted, you know, get a hold of us at Facebook or at Instagram or send us an email and it's cancrusher69 at gmail.com. You say, send us a message on Twitter. However, we're out there. and Head over to our website. Uh, there's links to get us an email there. Get get with us. We will gladly, you know, help you guys out. We, we love talking wrestling. Look, I mean, Dylan's is a little bit shorter, but that's just because there's more to come with Bostic. I can't answer, I can't ask all the questions that I have for him right now because he, he's going to be returning soon, I bet, uh, without a doubt. So... All right, guys, uh, that's about it. Thanks, Dylan, once again, for coming on the show. And we can't wait to set up that uh, live stream for All-Star Pro Wrestling. And we will see you guys on Sunday with our recap show and a lot more as Royal Rumble is right around the corner, and we're excited for that. But remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot.